Good morning. This is lecture number 13. And I want to talk a little bit about different types of appliances. I think we ought to start again with Angle. He, no doubt, um, put orthodontics on the map. And he used a, a series of appliances during his lifetime. But he always had great interest in posture and particularly of the uh, open mouth type. Um, he, as you know, avoided extractions and many people subsequently found that his cases relapsed. So one of his students, in fact, um, Tweed, uh, decided to try out extracting and he got really very nice straight teeth and this became very popular. I have discussed this before. But uh, interestingly, both Angle and Tweed, in their old age, felt that treatment should start young and it should involve correction of oral posture. They describe it in various different ways. But essentially, that is what they felt. And I think many orthodontists come to that conclusion towards the end of their life. Um, but of course, uh, currently, all orthodontists, I think, almost around the world, are taught um, that if you want to get straight teeth, it's a mechanical process. And uh, they get very straight teeth. But I think there's usually um, side effects which couldn't cause damage. Now, from a very early age, I was worried about teeth which stuck out and uh, the common cure for this was to pull them back. But I established the indicator line, which I've already described, the measurement from the tip of the nose to the tip of the upper front teeth. Um, I found that when teeth stuck out, as is a common phrase, the indicator line was always increased. In other words, relative to the face, the teeth were further down and back. This puzzled me for a long time, but I then tried moving the teeth up and forward. And I found that provided I could bring the mandible forward to match them, this produced a much better result. Um, I'll illustrate this with a case of a girl called Emily who I treated many years ago. And um, she um, uh, had, as you can see, sticking out front teeth. Um, you can see them some way below her lip. And the approach I took was to procline those teeth, which was very much um, contrary to all that was taught at the time. You can see in the middle picture at the bottom um, where I increased the overjet. The overjet, I think, was about 12 millimeters. And I think I increased it to nearly 17 millimeters, which of course is a huge distance. However, I then, by training her to keep her mouth shut, was able to get her lower jaw to grow forward. Remember, she was only eight years old. There's a lot of growth at that age. And so we get a nice incisor relationship. Right, there are some gaps, but one can close those from behind. But you can see the very considerable improvement in her face during this period. And that is, a, well, that particular case taught me a lot. And um, as a result, I tend now to uh, um, uh, it reduce the indicator line whenever I think it is too high. It's quite easy to measure it. For an adult, it should be about 38 millimeters for a man and 36 for a woman. Those are ideal measurements and very few of you will measure like that. Um, but if you are over 42 or 3, it will certainly damage your face. 
Now, um, all this was about 50 years ago, and I'm really rather horrified that having what I thought shown was the best way to treat patients, that orthodontists around the world still routinely pull back sticking out front teeth. Now, you might think that this is okay because it does get straight teeth, but there are consequences. The face tends to be flat, the cheeks become flat, um, and because there's then less room for the teeth, you either have to extract some or they will recrowd again as soon as you take the appliances off. There are deeper problems because patients who have their faces pulled back, as you might call it, also have a very much more increased tendency to temporal mandibular problems. Those are jaw joint problems or TMD, as they call it. Um, and that's not all. If you take the jaws back, you also tend to restrict what they call the airway the space at the back of your tongue, which enables you to breathe. And this particularly affects people at night because they fall asleep. Their tongue is too far back, and this tends to restrict their breathing. And there is currently a, a, a lot of concern about this because of the long-term damage it can do to the child, particularly as far as their brain is concerned. And people who have sleep difficulties like this tend to live about 10 years less long, which is a very significant point. Now, the traditional way that orthodontists have corrected big overjets, that's when the top teeth are a long way in front of the lower teeth, is by a, a series of appliances called functional appliances or orthopedic appliances. These are supposed to move the bone, but unfortunately they don't usually move the bone in a way you might want it to go. Generally, the bones move down and back. Um, and on a percentage of cases, I would think a percentage of about over 10%, you find you get damage done to the face. And now, that is a very well-known lady. Um, you can see she had a really nice square face as a 10-year-old but she was treated with functional appliances because her mother didn't want to have any teeth extracted. So the functional appliances, unfortunately, as you can see, pulled back both her upper and lower jaw. Now, as I say, this does not always happen, but it happens in point, I think, a high percentage of cases. And for these people, it really damages their lives. And in, you know, you can imagine the difference it would make to have your face change from a really nice square one to an oblong one. Well, um, uh, the functional appliances are popular in some countries, particularly in South America. But I think generally there, they have the same problems with a proportion of faces um, almost getting out of control. Recently, we have had the advent of a different type of appliance altogether. Um, those which straighten teeth um, by putting a cover over the teeth, such as Invisalign, you might have heard of it, or Smile Direct, two of the well-known firms. You just push them over your teeth, they're transparent so they don't show much, and they are very effective at aligning up the teeth. And I think I can very confidently say that um, they spell the end of the train tracks which you glue onto the teeth.
because the Invisalign system does align the teeth beautifully and um, the upper and lower teeth. The problem, of course, is that it doesn't control the position of the jaws. And uh, I have had some unfortunate patients whose faces have been, again, quite badly damaged because of the downwards growth. This not only lengthens the face, but makes it much thinner as well. And I think we can show that if we move to this next slide. You can see how on the left before treatment, her face was much wider and squarer. But on the right, after treatment, her face had become much thinner and longer and her chin had dropped down. Also, there are unfortunate changes around her lips and cheeks. These are for a slightly different reason. It is the cheeks and lips are supported by the muscles. And if you drop the jaw, particularly if you put the tongue between the teeth, it will really spoil the shape of the face, as you can see with this young lady. Her teeth, as you can see on the right there, really look much better. But um, <clears throat> I'm really not happy with <clears throat> a treatment which improves the teeth, if there is any risk of damaging the face. And I think that is where I will leave it for today. And I'll see you for lecture 14. Goodbye.